on YouTube. Happy Tuesday. Some new news has just come my way and I wanted to break down my thoughts on it at least to a small degree. Maybe I can actually keep it very succinct. Two things. First up, FMCSA has issued some final guidance about uh, brokers versus bona fide agents, which is some good information. The North American Transportation Association, whose email list I happen to be on somehow, just kind of appeared that way, I guess, and just one of those things. But I get some useful information from them every now and again. And uh, so they provided some clarity on brokers versus bona fide agents, which is good information, but what they did not do, they have yet to truly clarify where dispatch services fit in the whole ecosystem of for hire transportation and logistics. That's still kind of a nebulous gray area that is, uh, I, I think it's long overdue for regulation. And I do think there needs to be something done about the Wild West that appears to be the dispatch service industry or aspect of the industry because I'm quite frankly sick and tired of getting cold calls from dispatch services trying to get me on their serve on their network when I want absolutely nothing to do with them in the slightest. It's just like it's just not at all how I intend to do business. I've been dispatched when I drove for other carriers. I'm done being dispatched by somebody else, some other agent or person or employee somewhere in some desk in some office or cubicle or whatever, or sitting in their living room at home, randomly assigning me a load and saying, okay, you're picking up in Ohio and then you're gonna go to Idaho. And from Idaho, you're gonna go down to Utah. And from Utah, you're gonna go to Texas. And from Texas, you're gonna go to Chicago. It's like, okay. Thanks for consulting me on all of these options. Yay, awesome, now I'm done with that. I pick my freight, I go where I wanna go. And most of the time it works out that way. Not all the time, sometimes you gotta take a, you gotta take a loss every now and again, or you gotta go where you don't wanna go to keep things moving and keep the money flowing, but that's just part of business. You gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, but the second little bit of news here that is actually extremely frustrating and also more than a little infuriating is the great state of California is at it again. Now, this is something I have not bothered to confirm yet. Uh, this is a hot take or a hot flash or a whatever you want to do, however you want to term it, call it, refer to it, whatever. But again, according to the NTA mailing list, um, apparently, apparently, keyword there, apparently, the state of California has flagged all out-of-state commercial vehicles, regardless of make or model year, in order to essentially say, look, if you want to cross into California to conduct business, you must register with the CARB Act, California's Clean Air um, Restriction whatever you want to call it. There's the, the full acronym, I should know it, I don't, because I really don't care, uh, because I think California's bureaucracy is quite literally from the pit of hell, and as a result, I refuse to operate in California, or really in many respects, travel in the direction of California, because straight to hell with that government, administration, and collection of regulatory nightmares that is that state. Until they figure out that their anti-business sentiment makes most everyone to their east and even their north want to throw them into the Pacific Ocean, let them drown while they wash point and laugh, um, and they start making some real changes to, you know, become a little friendlier to the rest of us, screw them. Don't care if they fall off a cliff tomorrow. Away with them. We can boil their heads in their rice oil for all I care. Screw every single one of them. They are awful people. They're not worth my time, and that frustration that is operating that state, it just, it's not worth my mental energy. That state could fall off the map tomorrow, and I don't think anyone would truly shed a tear. Let's just be real here. And now because California wants to set themselves up for another lawsuit, because I'm sure someone is gonna sue them over this crap, it really is going to, in theory or potentially, crystallize the, in, the rights of individual states to regulate aspects of commercial enterprise within their borders as it pertains to 
those same enterprises than conducting business on an interstate level. Now, there's that neat little clause in the Constitution where, if I'm remembering correctly from my days of uh, high school and the Constitution class that I had to take and the test on the same document I had to take to graduate, interstate commerce and the regulation thereof is reserved for the federal government. And for whatever reason, the federal government has been turning a blind eye to California's absolute mental midgetry for the last, what, 30 years? Letting them get away with more and more and more and more crap to the point where essentially other states are beginning to copycat California's regulations and laws for some reason made sense to somebody at some point because someone got paid off probably but on the whole it's just why why would you want to copy the regulations and rules of one of the most annoying states in the entire union why and it's not just one state i think it's up to like six or eight states have uh, some California copycat rules on the books. Or they have a clause in some legislation that says, okay, if California does this within so much time, we have to implement that same regulation or that law within our state. And as far as I'm concerned, that is unconstitutional. Now, I'm not a legal scholar, obviously, I'm a trucker. But what California is doing, essentially, it is, is it's regulating interstate commerce. I mean, the DPF system that's on this truck right now, that is a California special. The diesel exhaust fluid I have in a tank, you know, under my uh, driver's seat here, that's a California special. Like, the entire system that is the state of trucking right now is all thanks to the state of California. And quite honestly, a lot of it is pretty crap. And people should have slapped California down for that, saying, no, you can't do that. You're regulating interstate commerce that is unconstitutional, that is beyond the scope of what you can do as a state. You can't do that. We won't let you. And if you try, we're going to fine you or we're going to cancel federal contracts and take money away from your state and give it to a state that actually will play by the rules. But no, the federal government did not do that. And as a result, California is behaving like a greedy toddler, just taking whatever it can and getting away with almost literal factual murder because it's California. Mustn't offend the Californians, I suppose. Screw them. I have not been to California since 2019, and by the looks of things, I will not be going back anytime soon, which is really unfortunate because there's a lot of cool stuff in California that I'd like to see, either again or for the first time. But because California is a regulatory nightmare, I don't feel any great need to waste my time there. And I certainly hope other truckers are of the same opinion and that we become a growing force to the point where California begins losing money. That'd be great. It's a pipe dream. That'd be great. Leave California to the megas. They can afford to deal with California's crap. They can afford to bend the knee at the liberal altar. Let them deal with it. Those of us who are solo or small fleet owner operators, there's plenty of other states who will very cheerfully do business with us and have much healthier climates to do business in. California is not that state. So yeah, choose wisely, I guess. And if you live in California, my sincerest condolences. And with that being said, YouTube, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you down the road.